Sick of this, this, and this? Me too. Today we're going through my skincare philosophy and skincare routine for sensitive, rosacea-prone, and acne-prone skin. This video has many parts. I will leave timestamps down below so you can get to your favorite part or take it in whatever order you like. This is not a sponsored video. These are genuine products I love and use. So bear with me. I promise the products are good. Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Robin and welcome to the Signs of Self-Care. On this channel, we talk about health science, we talk about life philosophy, and we do a whole lot of self-care experimentation. I'm very excited for today's video. This is my most highly requested video of all time. You guys have been asking for months and months for a skincare routine, and I've been a little bit apprehensive to film this because I feel like my skincare is always changing, and especially in the past year, it's been through quite a transition. But then I realized this is probably always gonna be the case. Quick intermission, after filming this, I actually added another product, which I'm very excited about and I'll talk about in this video. That is how much my skincare is constantly evolving. But more broadly, this video isn't really about products. I wanna share a little bit of my skincare philosophy so that you can develop your own skin tuition. This is a term I stole from Gothamista. She's an amazing skincare YouTuber, so if you're a skincare junkie, definitely check out her channel. But basically, developing your skin tuition means developing an intuition of what your specific skin needs at any one moment. As the seasons change, as our environments change, as we age, our skin is gonna need different things. By being a bit systematic with how we approach skincare and also paying attention to what our skin is doing with different products, we can develop a really strong skin tuition and that can guide us through many different phases of life. I never want anyone to forget that we are all our own expert of our own bodies and our own skin so i'll share my products today but just keep in mind that this is optimized for my skin for context i have oily acne prone and rosacea prone skin which is really the trifecta it's taught me a lot about skin and i'm grateful to be in a really good place with my body with kind of my sensitivity and inflammation also before i get into the topical parts of skincare i do of course need to mention that skincare really starts from within so for me, making sure that my diet and my lifestyle is not inflaming my body. Several years ago, I was struggling with a bit of leaky gut, which means that I was very inflamed and that was showing up on my skin as rosacea and acne. So now my body is more in balance and that definitely shows on the outside. That said, topical skincare can make a huge difference. There's a lot of clinical evidence to show that certain ingredients are extremely effective in in changing our skin. So it's this balance of first treating yourself on the inside, making sure you're balanced and healthy there, but also enhancing those results by being very conscious about what you're putting on top of your skin. So before we get into products, let's talk skincare philosophy. This is really important because I can tell you about certain products that may or may not work for you, but if your skincare philosophy is not in the right place, it will make the development of your own skin tuition that much slower. There's a few things I like to be very systematic about to help me learn very efficiently what works and what doesn't work for my skin. So in science, whenever we wanna test something, we only change one variable at a time. By only changing one variable, it's more likely that the results and the outcomes that we see are attributable to that variable. So what this means for skincare is that it's gonna be a lot easier to learn what works for your skin if we are only changing one product at a time. If we decide we wanna do a whole skincare overhaul and also change our toner and our sunscreen and also try a new sheet mask, well, then whatever results we get, good or bad, we won't really know which products are contributing to those results. And it makes the process of learning and developing a skin tuition that much more confusing and slow. So even though it seems very tedious to only change one product at a time, it can really speed up your skincare learning in the long run because after several days, you'll kind of understand what a new product does or doesn't do for your skin. Similarly, I also like to do A-B testing on my skin. So we are blessed with sort of symmetrical faces that basically allow us to have two samples, a baseline control sample and a variable sample. So again, if you wanna test a new moisture, 
moisturizer, I would only put it on half of your face for several days and leave the other half using your old moisturizer so that you can really compare whether this new moisturizer is an improvement in your skincare routine or whether it's not an improvement. Maybe there's no difference, but either way, having this direct comparison makes it that much easier to see exactly what that product is doing to your skin. So to review, if you want to be efficient with your skincare learning, change one variable at a time. That means change one product at a time and also do A-B testing on your face, meaning only put that new product on half of your face so that you have something to compare it to. So if there's a product in this video that sounds interesting to you, try introducing it on half of your face and try to keep everything else the same in your routine and see what it does for you. Maybe it does nothing. Maybe your skin hates it. Maybe it's life-changing for your skin. I don't know. But taking a systematic approach like this will make the whole process less confusing and much more efficient. Now let's get into the actual products that I use. I'm first going to run through kind of a nighttime skincare routine. Then I'm going to share with you what I do during the day. I also want to mention that none of these products are sponsored. I am so picky about what I put on my face. So for me, having sensitive skin, I want my products to be fragrance free. I want them to be alcohol free. And I personally also need them to be citrus oil free. I've noticed that products with citrus oils really irritate my skin. So there's a few things that I look out for and all the products I will mention today are going to be sensitive skin safe. These steps to my skincare routine are as follows. The first step is a cleansing step. Then we have a watering step. Then we have a building step, then a treating step, and lastly, a moisturizing step. Step one, cleansing. Here I'm using the Beauty of Joseon Radiance Cleansing Balm with rice and oat. I love these ingredients. They are so calming, full of beta-glucans. I will often make face masks at home using rice flour and oat flour. So cheap, so simple. So I really like this cleansing balm. It's very affordable and it's a pleasure to use. I follow up a cleansing balm with a generic gentle cleanser. Here I was using Cetaphil. I'm not too, too picky about my cleansers. I think there are many companies that have fragrance-free gentle cleansers. The most important things for me here are that it's affordable and that it's not gonna be stripping my skin. The next step of my routine is my favorite step. This is the watering step. <laughs> this is basically just soaking your skin with a hydrating essence or toner to add moisture to your skin. This step will give you that glass skin glow from within. I will usually do two to three layers of essence or until my skin feels saturated and plump. I've heard someone describe this as being similar to watering a plant. You just keep adding moisture until the soil is saturated. Both of these are great options. The Madagascar Centella Toner by Skin1004 and the Beauty of Joseon Essence with Ginseng. Right now I'm loving the Centella one. The next step is all about building a healthy skin barrier. This is when I use calming serums with ceramides and other peptides and probiotic ingredients that help support my skin and the healthy microbes that live on it. Again, we don't want to strip our skin of bacteria. We need those bacteria to protect us. So here are two great options, the Centella Pro Bio Sika Ampule by Skin1004. I am really loving this serum. It is affordable yet luxurious milky my skin really likes it too this one is pricier but this kate somerville serum always helps keep my skin microbiome balanced next comes the treatment step and this is where i'll include any sort of active ingredients that help treat skin concerns like perhaps vitamin a products for texture or acids for acne if you have sensitive skin, it's super important to be very conservative with this step. Here are a few products I use in my rotation. This retinol eye serum by Beauty of Joseon is very gentle because it contains a retinol derivative, so it's likely not going to irritate you and it's got a beautiful texture. I have also been experimenting with this azelaic acid by Paula's Choice because there's a lot of research to support that azelaic acid can be an effective treatment for rosacea. If I'm honest, I don't think it does much for my skin. I don't think my skin really likes azelaic acid, but rosacea is such a personal thing. This is a great product and worth trying if you do have rosacea because your rosacea might be responsive to it. Okay, really quick, rosacea, what is it? 
Rosacea is a relatively common skin condition that primarily affects the face, causing redness, visible blood vessels, swelling, and sometimes small red pus-filled bumps. There are several different types of rosacea. I personally have rosacea type 1, which is characterized by redness, flushing, and visible blood vessels. Rosacea runs in my family, and for me personally, it's exacerbated by certain foods, digestive issues, and the sun, which is why you always see me wearing this crazy sun hat in all my videos. <laughs> But at its core, rosacea is really an inflammatory disease, which means things that reduce inflammation in our body will likely also help us avoid flare-ups. And lastly, I really like this Metacube Red Centella Balm as an acne spot treatment. It dries up breakouts without irritating my skin. And you'll notice I've mentioned several products with Centella. Centella is short for Centella Asiatica, which is a small herbaceous plant native to Asia. It has anti-inflammatory properties. It has wound healing properties. It has many antioxidants. It's moisturizing. And my skin and rosacea do really seem to like this stuff. Okay, pause real quick. This treat step is where I have been experimenting the most recently. And right after filming this video, I actually got my order from Agency, which is so exciting. This is not sponsored whatsoever. Agency does not know I exist but I have been eyeing their custom dermatologist prescribed formulas for a bit. Honestly, I was not expecting it to work for me, but man, oh man, I really, really love this custom formula. Basically what you do is you upload a few photos of your face, you have a little questionnaire that you fill in and you have a chat with a dermatologist and then they make you a custom formula. This is my custom future formula. It has a small amount of tretinoin, which is what I'm very excited about. Tretinoin is the most potent form of vitamin A, and it can be really effective in treating both rosacea and acne if it is used responsibly and you build it up slowly. So that is why you do need a prescription to use tretinoin. So my skin has really been loving this stuff. It's been happy and moisturized, and hats off to this company for making prescription skincare far more accessible and a very pleasant experience. And lastly, we have the moisturizing step. The goal here is to lock in all the beautiful things that we've just put on our face. I use this very basic moisturizer from CeraVe, the nighttime repair cream. It's full of ceramides and shea butter. It's very occlusive. It's gonna lock all the good stuff in and it's affordable. That's also relatively important to me because skincare, it can add up. It's a recurring cost in our lives. So let's keep it simple when we can. As a bonus, we have a very edgy step that I don't think dermatologists would approve of, but through my A-B testing on my face and lots of experimentation, my skin just really, really likes it. It just really works for me, and so I just want to be honest and share something that works, but you know, try it at your own risk. Essentially what I do as a very last step, not always, but often, is I will put an entire zinc oxide mask on my face. And what I'm using here is a fragrance-free diaper cream. You wanna be careful because a lot of diaper creams have ingredients like fragrances and other things that you don't wanna leave on your skin all night, but this one has pretty great ingredients. And what I found is by putting a zinc oxide mask on my skin, it really balances my oil production. It gives me kind of this brightened glow. It heals any sort of wounds very quickly. I don't know, something about it just works for my skin. I'm embarrassed that I often go to bed like this. <laughs> if you're feeling a little adventurous, I would try maybe first using zinc oxide cream as a spot treatment for any acne that comes up. I keep going back to it. And actually last year is when I first started using it. And after I started using this, people would tell me in real life that my skin was glowing. But again, this is so personal to me. It may not work for you at all. I'm just, I felt obliged to share it because I really love it. Okay, so quick little adjustments for the morning time. I will do similar steps in the morning, maybe light on the treatments, but I will add in a lighter moisturizer and also a SPF. And I keep going back to Elta MD as my favorite SPF. It's not the best under makeup and it doesn't always play well with other moisturizers and products. Sometimes it pills a little bit, 
but my skin genuinely loves this stuff, I think because it contains niacinamide and a bunch of great ingredients for rosacea and acne. It's developed specifically for rosacea and acne prone skin, so I keep returning to Elta MD. Okay, one more intermission. I want to show you the state of my rosacea here. I typically get one professional IPL photo facial per year to manage the rosacea and redness that naturally comes up in my skin over time. IPL facials are great at clearing out that pigment because the light specifically targets and destroys pigment and so this is something you can do in clinic but between my annual clinic visit I will actually use an at-home IPL device. They're not going to be as strong as something you would get in an office of course but they work and they keep redness and discoloration at bay and I really swear by them. I would love to know what your favorite holy grail skincare tips, tricks, and products are. Please share with us down below. I always learn so much from you guys in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.